I mean, in my dream scenario, if I could draw it up on, on a board, I'd say, okay, have this stuff come out, and everything kind of takes a dump. Hey guys, welcome back to Library of Wealth. Today we have Bitcoin analyst Gareth Soloway giving his take on the drop in cryptocurrency across the market. Gareth has begun getting confirmation of Bitcoin specifically and the continuation of the move up to the 25,500 level. He confirms that there is a chance we could go through to a level 28,500. Even though Soloway is in the position where he doesn't believe we will advance to a higher level, he thinks that there is still more of a downside. Gareth took profits with a long position in Bitcoin and still has a similar position in Ethereum as well as other digital assets. With his current level of exposure, it's a short-term strategy to play up into resistance levels, and once there, he'll be looking to take more profits. Let's listen as Gareth Soloway talks about the issues with more potential lows being in the crypto environment. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you enjoy the content we do here on this channel. Let's get right into the video. That's the key, right, is that we're in a market where it's not just the market where you close your eyes, you throw a dart at any sort of crypto or stock, and you just make endless amounts of money. This is a market where true traders come out as pros, and then everyone else kind of unfortunately falls by the wayside. So, so the way I do these courses, it's, it's basically compiling all the knowledge and the, the trials and tribulations of what I learned over 20 years of trading, right? So, so in the beginning, I took hard lessons. It cost me money. Luckily, I didn't have a lot of money early in my trading career, or I would have lost that as well. But it was really learning the hard way by studying trial and error and, and figuring out the different methods that you need to put together. So for instance, along the way, I had to, I forced myself to develop this strict discipline. Right, because if you're not disciplined, this market will eat you alive. Doesn't matter if it's crypto, commodities, currencies, or stocks, there are sharks in those waters run by institutions, run by algorithms. All of that stuff is made to kind of make you do the wrong thing at the wrong time. Then all of a sudden you stop making the kind of the errors that the common investor makes. Another part was the emotional control, which ties into discipline. How do you get a handle on that emotion when you see people pumping, like the influencers on Twitter saying, Bitcoin's going to 100,000 next month or, or 500,000. How do you keep yourself grounded? And in fact, we even go into how do you use that as a contrarian indicator and a signal to actually do the opposite of what you're seeing in the Twitter sphere or the, the social media uh, area. That you can teach, the emotion and discipline is the harder part, but going into the charts now, I definitely go over all my strategies, like everything I've accumulated for 20 years, um, my setups, like what setups do I find to be most successful that have a high win rate, high probability of success. And then ultimately the last course kind of delves into all my secrets. So in 20 years, you can imagine I've come up with a lot of different you know, techniques that aren't taught in books that I found as I've been studying that work, like the confirmation signal, the three tail theory, time counts, different cycle work. And that's all revealed there. So I really poured my heart and soul into it um, to give people a fighting chance to make money, not in not just in bull markets, but in bear markets and in choppy markets like we're seeing here. Soloway is bothered by not seeing enough disruption in the crypto sphere as even Ethereum is still considerably down. Gareth wonders if this is the bottom, how can so many coins still exist, and if we're heading up, how this will play out in the future. He also explains that even though the Fed will stop hiking later this year, the reason why they're implementing this is because we will be seeing an extremely destructive event coming down the line. NASDAQ is actually starting to collapse, and along with the stock market's downfall, this will actually strengthen Bitcoin. How did you get to that point where you felt so confident to see everyone's this way, I'm going to go this way. So, so a lot of it comes from kind of trial and error, at least for me, because I was the one kind of figuring it out. I think if I had someone to follow that kind of had done a lot of the legwork already, it would have come a lot faster. But I think the key about this is that, you know, one of the things with contrarian thinking is that you want to start questioning everything. When everyone's saying something, you need to be able to separate yourself and say, wait a minute, I'm noticing that everyone's saying this and it's very likely a top in Bitcoin or a top in this stock and start thinking that contrarian way. But 
also take it slow. So one of the things we talk about in, in the courses is about how you have to manage your position size, how you have to kind of think about jumping into a position with a small testing position, kind of like dipping your toe in the water. And that enables you to kind of prove to yourself that it actually works. And I'm a big, I'm a big player on that in terms of, you know, everyone taking these courses, I, I hope you just don't say, oh, Gareth said so, so I'm going to just do it. You know, take it with a grain of salt and prove it to yourself as well, because that will be a confidence builder when you do it over and over again with small shares or small coin amounts. And then you can kind of say, okay, eight out of every 10 times this works. That's, I've done that a hundred times. Now I feel confident to up my amount of money invested and that will just kind of build on your confidence. Everyone's so kind of focused in on the Federal Reserve and the tightening and all this. And we've seen the dollar start to surge back up, but you actually have this beautiful double top right here. And, and a lot of people think it's gonna just rip higher. I'm not a believer in that. I actually think we're gonna to start to see a pullback and a move lower in the dollar. And if we go to a larger time frame, if I zoom out, you can see two trend lines, right? So this trend line, it kisses right here. It kind of gets close here, but then it tags and pierces here. And then look at that one, how it intersects there. And then this little pivot low going back to 2001. I think that's the most amazing thing. And by the way, in the <laughs> courses, in the courses I teach about drawing proper trend lines, right? How do you know this is the right trend line to draw? And we go over that, but finding a pivot point here, going back to 2000 or 2001, I mean, that is so powerful to find that level and understand you should have resistance here. So I'm in the camp that I think the dollar is actually gonna to start to weaken in the second half or in the, in the last couple quarters of the year into 2023. And I think that's gonna coincide with this kind of counter thought process where the Fed is actually going to have to pull back on their rate hikes. And actually, as we see the economy, unfortunately slipping more into recession, they're gonna basically have to stop. And, and this is gonna be a tricky thing for the economy to get through, but I think it's gonna be a creator of a weaker dollar. Bitcoin correlation to the dollar, and then you have a lot of the other cryptos that trade off of Bitcoin and, and by default the dollar as well, right? So we see generally whichever direction Bitcoin's going, the rest of the crypto market is going to kind of go in that direction to some extent, you know, maybe a little bit of a percentage difference. But yeah, I mean, I wouldn't shock me if we see a short term relief rally in Bitcoin, maybe back towards that 25,000 level. I am kind of midterm still, unfortunately, a little bearish, mainly because I do worry that. The economy weakening, it, you know, think about this. The last 20 years, the Fed has, every time we've slipped into a recession, the Fed lowers interest rates and prints money and prints a ton of money. Well, yeah. inflation doesn't enable them to do that as much. And I don't think the markets fully gather that yet. And so I do worry that if we do slip into a recession, what's the what's the card the fed plays here they can't just print us out of it because inflation is going to remain relatively elevated now inflation is coming down but it's not going back to two percent which is going to make it hard for them to kind of stimulate so i worry that we'll have a, a asset sell-off either later this year or in 2023 and just by default we know that a risk asset selling off like stocks will trigger a Bitcoin kind of flush out. Now, I do think that's the final flush out where we look to start to accumulate on a longer term for Bitcoin. So I think, you know, think about this is that the, 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 the kind of the dream that a lot of crypto Bitcoin players have, and not everyone, but a lot of them is that Bitcoin will become the digital gold. And what that means is that as we see inflation kind of rear its ugly head, it becomes a safe haven versus something that sells off when the panic hits. And so you kind of want to see that maturity start to take hold in Bitcoin over the next five, 10 years and become that place where people can go for safety versus right now what it is, is it's a very risky asset to invest in. So remember that, that Bitcoin is traded in terms of dollars and gold is traded in terms of dollars. So generally, when the dollar goes up, those assets have to decline to keep their value, to keep their standard value. And that's why we see, you know, for instance, when the dollar is higher, Bitcoin sells off, gold sells off. And then when the dollar falls, Bitcoin oftentimes gets a bid and, and gold will get a bid and metals will get a bid in general. So there's this kind of inverse relationship because commodities and, and in all fairness, we're hearing from the SEC that Bitcoin is kind of now a commodity. It's traded in terms of dollars. Soloway believes that most currency should be wiped out with only the top 50 coins surviving, then new money will be able to come out that have fantastic use cases. Gareth says that speculating on the 1001 currencies by market cap needs to be wiped out, 
and only assets with legitimate use cases remaining. Soloway notes that watching inflation comes down to watching the economic numbers and seeing how quickly the economy is slowing down. If abysmal economic numbers are seen, markets will begin to panic about a recession coming. And if inflation can only be pulled back by about 6% and we're in recession, the Fed can't just print more money, which will take us to the next leg lower in the markets. What do you guys think about Gareth Soloway's prediction of the impact of inflation in the current markets, as well as the crypto landscape? Let us know in the comments below. Guys, thanks so much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. This is Library of Wealth. We'll see you in the next video.